sometimes I look at it this way knowledge is not about resume or all that knowledge to me is what you carry it here what what is it that I'm learning what is it I'm learning and what is it I can do with that knowledge what what is it In the beginning, there were two sisters who cut off two digging sticks in Gamai on Ganaigal, Ganaigal headland. They stabbed their digging stick into the ground and said together, Ngalua Kitota, Ngalua Kitota. And as they did, water trickled around their stick. And then they split up. The younger sister went north, the older sister went south, all the way around the continent and came back through the continent. Then they stabbed their stick into the ground and crossed them over. Ngālua ki tōta, Ngālua ki tōta. And them two sisters went up and became part of our seven Pleiades, our seven song lines. Right there, in that very spot, split solitary island, is where all the magic happens for Gumbanga country. That's the mixture of water, from warmer waters, from up north, to the colder waters, down south. And the stronger winds, up north, the calmer winds, to south, this here is the change in country. Gumbanga country. I was born in Grafton, and that's where I was raised. Raised at the camp at Red Rock with all our old people there. The massacres at Red Rock. Never talked about much. It is recorded in a government system. Hundreds of my people died at Red Rock in the river, shot. My grandfather and grandmother survived and had children. I'm lucky enough to have that photo. I'm lucky enough to have it. I suppose as we move from this to the sort of next part of our life, where our life is changing, we're not let roam freely no more is where you're put into camps and you're controlled and you've got to get permission. And this, this is an identity card, dog tag, they call it. Police officer come whenever you want to check where you are and if you're not carrying this, you're in trouble. This one, been kept since 1942. Before we got this card, we was just what was classified as flora and fauna people. And what it is, it says it's a registration that you are now a British subject. But then in 1967, we were recognised to vote. So I reverted back to become an Aboriginal person of this country. So I had three identity in my life. Some I'm not proud of. I belong to this country. Um, I didn't belong as a British person. Yeah, then I move on with all those th things in my head, but at the same time, everything else is changing around you. But at the same time, I'm trying to keep my culture alive. My thought always was, we can't do it alone. We've got to empower our young ones. We've got to empower them. We've got to take out of their minds that they, they've got shame in their body or something like that. Yeah, what happened in, in the past, what we tell them, that happened. That don't hold shame. You've got to be proud. You've got to be proud of who you are. Because the culture, your culture comes from in here in there. That's where the culture come from. You've got to be proud of being an Aboriginal person. Then you can cross a bridge with your culture and your mainstream uh, education. You can cross it because you're proud of two different things. 
And that's the way we've got to work. That's the way we've got to work. And we're still coming to terms with it. That split that we live with in today's world, the mainstream world, keep it separate. Keep your mind open. And we will make it together. We will. The only way now is a new way. The new way. And let's explain about our culture. Let's explain about our past. And what is it that we want in the future? We just want a good life for our kids. Equal opportunity for them. Equal education opportunity for them. And at the same time, let them let them learn their language. Let them learn their dance. Let them learn. Let them just be part of their country. That's all we ask. And we'll all be happy together.